I don't know about you, but I was dreading moving Resolve from an old computer to a new computer. So welcome back to Creator Reality. I recently replaced this MSI laptop with a new desktop and I had to move Resolve from the laptop to the desktop. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through that process with you. I'm not actually gonna show you the actual process of it, but I took copious notes so that you can avoid some of the pitfalls that I ran into and be better prepped to do the transfer. And yes, I'm gonna let it sit back there for the entirety of this video. It is no longer needed because everything I need in Resolve is on the new computer, yay me. Anyway, in case you're wondering, I bought a PowerSpec G752, which has a 5070 Ti graphics card, which DaVinci Resolve 20 Beta 1 now optimizes for, yay me. It's got 96 gigs of RAM and a Ryzen 7 9800X3D CPU. Those are the big specs you need to know. It's also a Windows computer, but I did take copious notes. So let's begin with the pre-prep work. I've developed some best practices, one of which is to not transfer Resolve when you're in the middle of editing, especially if you have deadlines. I don't have any deadlines, I'm a YouTuber. I run two YouTube channels, and so what I did was I had a couple of videos for each channel already uploaded and scheduled out, so it could give me two weeks to do this project. It ended up taking three, but... I was able to continue editing what I'd already recorded and had not uploaded, so you guys didn't miss anything. And the other thing I did was to have that laptop, where is it? Back there, I had that laptop handy and available while I was setting up the new computer. Big help to do that, transferring files, looking at settings, all that sort of stuff. I was able to handle it pretty easily because I could fire up the laptop, put it over here on my desk next to the desktop monitors, and check my settings and copy things over. Made it super easy. I also have a lot of external drives and you're gonna need at least one for this project. Now, we're gonna start the prep work by me mentioning that I have six external drives that were hooked to that laptop. Yep, three SSDs and three hard disk drives. So spinning rust disks or whatever you kids are calling them these days. It's what I grew up with. The SSDs are just blazing fast in comparison. By the way, I always recommend editing with SSDs, and I will leave links below to the two SSDs that I have been using and really enjoying, and they're reliable. At least for me, your mileage may vary. I'm not going to go into it, but they're affiliate links, so it helps out the channel if you buy them. Thank you in advance. There, enough shilling for myself. So it's time to do the prep work, right? First thing you want to do is back up your Resolve database. Let's take a look in Resolve. I'll show you how to do that. And here we are in the project manager. We're gonna click this little icon here, which brings up our project libraries. You'll notice that this one says local database two. That is because I did a backup and when I did a restore, it didn't like the name, so I had to change it and create a new one. We'll go through that in a second. But what we're gonna do is click on details and click backup. It'll ask you where you wanna store it and put a place on your desktop or any kind of place that's easy to find. You can back up the project database to anywhere, but I recommend either your desktop or an external drive. The end goal is to have it on the external drive anyway, but I figured it might prevent an error if I put it on the desktop. And do note that depending on the number of projects in your project library, you might actually have a four or five gig file. So pretty big files. Anyway, moving on. Once it's done backing it up, you'll get a screen confirming that and you're good to go. And do note that the project library backup will contain things like your power bins and your projects and some of the settings that uh, really actually surprised me when I restored it to my new installation of Resolve on the new computer that a lot of this stuff was brought over. Some of that has to do with the external drive letters being the same from one computer to another. If they're not, you can easily copy them, but that brings up the next step, and that is to take all of your assets, all of the things that you reuse from project to project, and make a backup copy of those on your external drive. You can then either copy them locally on your new computer and link them, or get lucky like me and just have it automatically linked because the drive letters were the same. I store everything on external drives anyway. I basically only run my operating system and DaVinci Resolve 
on my computer uh, internal drive just makes things easy for me. And again, like I'm switching computers and it was super easy to just unplug the drives from the old computer, plug them into the new computer. And I just did the Carlton. If you get that reference, you need an aspirin and a nap. One of the other things that you might want to do is to copy or re-download DaVinci Resolve, the latest version that you have been using, so that you can get started with the same exact version on the new computer. In my case, that was 19.1.4, and eagle-eyed viewers will notice in the screen recording earlier, I'm using DaVinci Resolve 20 Beta 1. I've done some videos on it. I'm not going back. I'm using 20. It's optimized for my new computer, which I didn't know before I bought the 5070 Ti graphics card in my new computer that... DaVinci Resolve was not optimized for it, but now I know. Whew. Either way, 20 is working the same as 19 for a lot of this stuff, so you shouldn't have an issue even if you're using 19.1.4 with following this video. Have you learned anything yet? Boop the like button. Let me know in the comments below if you learn stuff. I always like to hear that feedback from my viewers. Thank you very much. Next thing I did was make a list of plugins and get their associated licenses. I have things from Waves, I have Alex Audio Butler, and I have Dehancer. Two of those I've had for many years now, and I made sure that I had the downloads for them, and I had the license keys. Two super important things when you're setting up your new Resolve installation, and I put those on the external drive as well. Gotta have that stuff, right? That's super important. But the thing I didn't know about that I didn't find out until after, and again, I'll point to my laptop back there, made it handy to have it, was my fonts. There are some fonts that I used on my laptop that for some reason weren't on my new desktop. So I went into Windows and I made a copy of the fonts folder, dragged that onto the external drive as well, brought it over to the new computer, and then all of the text stuff, like this text right here, that font wasn't available, but once I copied the fonts over, now it was. I just installed them and I'm good to go. Kind of a little thing, but it can make a big difference if you're looking to get back up to speed editing quickly, right? So now it's time to set up the new computer. First thing I did was boot it up. <laughs> We're not going to start back there all the way. No, no, no. I got it booted up and I got DaVinci Resolve installed on it. I used the 19.1.4 download that I had. And pro tip, Keep the downloads when you download a new version of Resolve. Keep them in a backup folder somewhere. They're only like 4 gigs, or the new 20 is 7.5 gigabytes, but it's really handy in case you encounter a bug or an error or an issue with the newest version of Resolve, and you have to go back to the older version. You don't have to go searching for it online. It's right there on your computer. So after I got Resolve installed, it was time to restore my project library. Let's go take a look at how that process works. We're going to click on our home icon and it brings up the project manager. Click on the little icon, and right here, you've got a restore button. So you can go search for your backup file and restore it. And once it's restored, then you can disconnect the stock or default project library, and you might have had to change the name of your old one to a new name, but the names doesn't matter. A rose by any other name smells just as sweet, or some such nonsense. Either way, now we've got our projects. Guess what we get to do next? You're right, we get to open a project. So one of the first things I did after restoring my project library was to come up to DaVinci Resolve and keyboard customization. And you can export it using the three dots up here. You can export your preset and then you can actually import another preset. So you can copy this file over from your old computer to the new one and go, or you can do it the way I did, which was, there's only like three customizations I wanted to keep. I just went in and made the customizations and saved them. Easy peasy, it's pretty easy screen to use, fairly intuitive, just hold the buttons down that you wanna give a hot key to, and voila, you know, there you're done. Pretty simple. The next thing I did was to restore some of my Resolve settings. So if you come up to DaVinci Resolve, click Preferences, you have System and User. So I went through and look at this, ooh, lots of that memory. I went through all these screens and made sure that my media storage locations were the same and set up. And then I went through all of these and just made sure that 
everything, all the file links were there. A lot of them are in the user section, so things like project save and load, you gotta set up your backups. And it's just a good idea to go through all of these and make sure that you have all of your settings. You wanna be up and running and not have to tweak things in the middle of the next edit, right? We're all about saving time around here. So after saving those settings, Resolve may have to be restarted once it's back up. Now you're ready for your plugins, right? So you have your downloads from the external drive and you've got your license keys, so it's time to install those. In my case, again, it was Waves, Alex Audio Butler, and Dehancer. Got those installed, got the licenses activated, good to go. Except there was something broken between the old computer and the new one. And I think that was the presets for my Waves plugins which are stored somewhere, I don't know. So I rebuilt them from memory. There was only like two or three per plug-in. Pretty easy stuff, but I rebuilt those. What that required was me rebuilding my Fairlight presets. Why I said it that way, I have no idea. But let's click on the Fairlight icon. And up here in the Fairlight menu, you have the presets library. And I went down to Fairlight configuration presets and I created my presets. Pretty easy stuff. I did it in this video here. You're welcome. Now I'm ready to create new projects, right? But before I did that, I went in and opened an older project just to make sure that everything was still there and the playback worked. And you may have to relink files. So if we go back to the edit page and you see this icon here, it'll turn red when there's, uh, when there's missing clips. There are zero missing clips here, but you can do a disk search or click locate for each of these folders. And then you can find your files and Resolve will relink them and then you can make sure that the playback works and your fonts are working and your plugins are working and all that happy stuff. All your editing, everything you normally do is all set up. And what you may find is that one of your older projects has some other settings. Let's take a look. If we go to file and come down to project settings, you'll see that I have a custom resolution and I've got my video resolution, but then I've got enable background caching after one second, and then I've got some locations here. What you can do is come up here and default preset, update. It'll overwrite the default project settings, or you can set current settings as default preset. This is kind of a shortcut for getting your project settings on the new computer set up to match the ones from the old computer. Voila, we're saving more time, not having to rebuild things from scratch. Yay us. Now, once I knew everything was working fine in editing, it was time to do a test render to make sure that Resolve would render my project correctly. This is another reason I chose an existing project to work with because I didn't have to go do editing and then have something not work. All the editing was done. So I went in and I hit render and an existing project, a max on that laptop, there's my prop, Maximum speed, it would render at about 175 frames per second. The new computer, just for grins, 315 frames per second was the peak speed I saw, with an average of about 240 frames per second, which is just mind-boggling, just super fast. And this is stuff with fusion effects and plugins and audio processing and all that stuff. Buttery smooth, loved it. Zoom, it was fast. And that was it. I now knew that I could open an existing project, create a new project, do my editing. All my keyboard shortcuts and fonts were there and plugins and everything else like that. So I'm ready to rock and roll and keep bringing content to you, which makes me happy. So that's it. We're ready to rock and roll. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to boop the like button. Maybe consider subscribing. Maybe ask a question down below in the comment section about something in uh, DaVinci Resolve you'd like me to cover. And until next time, check out this video here while I go put that laptop in a bin somewhere. <laughs> I hope you're having a great day. John out.